Introducing one of Maiden 06's lead guitar player. The band is named after him because he was born in 2006. Mr. Sebastian Baz Burnside. Musicians in bars getting beards. Baz, how you doing, buddy? I'm great. How are you? Good. We're at the Linsmore. Are you getting a beer tonight, by any chance? I'm not, unfortunately. Not yet. Just, not a, just yet. a year under. A year under. A year under. So tell me about that lot. How does that work? Like, are you allowed to play everywhere? Uh, typically, sometimes there are issues. I remember there was talk of me doing a show at the Phoenix, but it was essentially going to be where I have to go in, play, and leave. Like, I'm not allowed <laughs> to hang out or any of that. So there are some very small issues with yeah, it, yeah, yeah. but as a whole, I'm generally allowed to. Uh, are you 17, play. 18? 17, 18 in about a week. A week? Oh, well, happy birthday in advance. Thank, thank you. That's cool. So, yeah, I saw you at the Australian thing. You were 13 at the time. And uh, just nailing it, just shredding right from the beginning. So, uh, like he says, he thought he was doing you a favor, but probably one of the best shredders in town. You know, Roland's up there too, right? Oh, and there's your, so And your second guitarist. What's your second guitarist? Uh, or your Nate second Smith. first uh, guitarist? Nate Smith. Nate Smith. Nate Smith. Cool. And they make an incredible team. And yeah. so, how did you guys meet then, you and Jimmy? Uh, so, At basically, jam? Uh, yeah, 2018, uh, December, my parents took me out to the jam. And uh, I went there, I played some Maiden. I went back the next month, played some more. Ma Actually, I played Maiden, I played some Metallica, a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. And uh, James messaged my parents and he said, hey, we sh do you want to do an Iron Maiden tribute? So obviously my parents talked to me and all that. And you know, being a Maiden fan, I was a Maiden fan since I was about eight. So doing that band was just kind of like a dream come true, getting to play all these Maiden songs on a stage. Yeah, yeah for you, like doing it in your bedroom. Yeah, exactly. But to the record player, or I mean, not record player. We used to have record players in the old yeah. days, eh? Hey, they're coming back. <laughs> they're coming back. I still say those old cliche words. So, um, Maiden's kind of old school for you. It was your parents' influence, I guess. Uh, yeah. So when I was about seven, my dad showed me Aces High by Maiden, and since then it was just a fucking rabbit hole. <laughs> so that's cool. And uh, so dad's a big uh, metalhead. Oh yeah, he's a big metalhead. That's all. It's his genre. Shout out to Mike. Absolutely. So that's the beginning. Uh, you know, we don't have much history to talk about, but what are your other influences? Favorite guitarists? So, um, a lot of people don't n really realize this about me, but a lot of the stuff I listen to now is very kind of opposite on the spectrum from what I play. So I'm into a lot of like the newer, like the, the metal cores, you know, your death core. So lately I've been really big into like Ice Nine Kills, so Dan Sugarman, I think he's one of the, honestly one of the greatest guitar players right now. I was big into Avenged Sevenfold for a while, you know, with Sinister Gates. The stuff he's doing lately is phenomenal. And just music wise, like Motionless and White, Architects, like I think the stuff they're doing is absolutely incredible. Cool. And uh, yeah, so that's modern. Yeah, very modern. They have so many different genre names like Oh yeah, you have Grunt, so many. No, I mean, uh, Gent is one yeah, of the Yeah, you have everything. Favorites. You have Gent, you have, you have your new metal, you have metalcore, yeah. deathcore, everything. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of math metal and stuff like that. Yeah, I did get into that for, I did get into that for a little just, while. Yeah. I mean, I don't listen to it all the time. I dabble here and there. But yeah. But it's good to broaden your horizons as guitarists, right? Yeah, definitely. So, so you plan on, where do you plan on going with this when you, do you write your own stuff yet? I do write my own stuff. Okay. Uh, I've been working on an album for about the past year-ish. And is and it with a band or you've just done a Solo project. I'm going to, I plan to record everything on my own. So vocals, you guitar, software or, or just uh, old I have school? software, but I also had Noah guy who said he would record it for me. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, okay. So shout out so to. That's uh, cool. Yeah, that guy. Oh, go ahead. So shout out to my friend uh, VJ. All right. He he said he'd do it. So. That's awesome. Great guy. Okay, cool. And uh, so that's a kind of an on the go, and you've got this tribute. I have this one. I have uh, Madam, which is you know the cover, a cover band. So who's um, in Madam? Madam is myself, Deborah Steve Thorpe. And then John and Nate from Maiden 06. I also have a project going on also with John and Nate called Hellbent, a uh, tribute to Judas Priest. And we got Steve Carter for vocals on that. We have Gary Atkins on drums. Oh, yeah. And then I have another thing that I'm not going to talk about yet, but it's in the works. And what is it? What, 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 I'm not what allowed can, to. It, it's, another it solo it's another tribute it? band, but okay, I'm not tribute. allowed to talk about it yet. That's fine. That's, and yeah, another tribute band. All right, that's cool. Ah, I like that. It's a mystery. We'll have to post it when it comes out. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite guitar? My favorite? Oh, pro okay. I have my favorite guitar and I have my workhorse. Um, favorite guitar? My crap. Both are funneling up here. 
Uh, my uh, Jackson Crackle SLX soloist, phenomenal guitar. I've ha I got that for my uh, 13th. 13th birthday, <laughs> which I played on my birthday show. Yeah. So you know that that one's obviously the like Crackle one. Oh yeah, like yeah. Fire Crackle. Yeah. I've yeah. Seen so that. that one's probably you got my, that one on video. Yeah, it's your yeah, tonight. It's probably my favorite one. That's gonna be my main one for tonight. Uh, I also bought. Uh, here's here's the workhorse. I bought uh, Adrian Smith's signature model off of uh, Brian Green. A lot of people might know Brian Green. So Waking I bought Aiden. it off. Yeah. Yeah, Waking Aiden. So uh, I bought it off him about a year and a half ago, oh my God. I'd say. And yeah, that guitar, it, just, it can do everything. It's so good. Okay, so I got a question which uh, uh, everybody can relate to, but yeah. the way I got it was because I was watching the Woodstock movie. So okay. there's a movie from yeah. the 60s, and this nerd reporter dude okay. with a microphone is walking in the mud in his suit and tie. It was really cool. Okay. <laughs> like, whoa, look at the nerd. And he goes up to the somebody on acid or something, and he just goes, why is music the great communicator? Or something like that. So you go. Oh, that, that's really tough. Because yeah. <laughs> I feel like music can reach anyone. Do you need in... some psychedelic drugs first? Maybe. <laughs> no, uh, no sorry, I feel, like, I feel like music, it can reach everybody. Like, yeah. If you write a song, it's music, that's the thing. Is music isn't objective, it's all subjective. So you could write a song about a breakup, and some people could take that as help through a breakup. They could help through losing a friend, having someone die, having, you know, losing True. anything. Mm -hmm. So honestly, music can be interpreted in so many different ways. I feel like, I feel like that's why it's such a great communicator, because no matter like how old you are, how, you know, where you come from, I feel like it can always reach someone. Just like any art, it's up to the audience interpretation. Yeah, 100%. It's the same as like visual art or dance or anything like that. It's all up for interpretation. And I think that's kind of the beautiful thing about it. And everyone does try and internalize it like that. So that's cool. That's a good, uh, that's a good reason. And, and nice and concise too. I like that. You know, that's an opportunity to go off on a tangent. And some people have used this show for 45 minutes. So feel free to say whatever you want to the world. Right. What are you going to say to yourself? Like if you're, if you're going to talk to your 40 year, year old Juno winner already what are you going to say to yourself in the future keep having fun yeah for one honestly yeah that's basically what I would say keep going just never give up don't stop but you've already won the Juno now like what even, you... even after you win stuff don't ever give up always keep True, trying to push Strive. higher yeah like I, I feel like you're never at the highest you can be like even if you look at Metallica they've been around you know 40 years and they're still going high, bigger and bigger and bigger every day. That's true. Doing these massive tours. So I feel like no matter how old you are, how many awards you've won or whatever, you can always get higher up in, in the industry. And uh, that's fully what I'm planning on doing. That's a cool answer. And so what about Toronto? Like, what, where have been your favorite places? Uh, in Toronto or venues? Uh, all over, yeah, wherever. Uh, Toronto, um, I don't know, I like, I like downtown Toronto. Downtown is really nice. Uh, venue wise, I like I like the Rock Pile in Tokyo. Yeah, you know, that's where I got my start. It's where they all they always treat everyone so well. Like, yeah, it's always a good vibe there. Yeah, and uh, Rock just, Pile's great. Yeah, yeah. And so here's general, the Lenny. Yeah, here's the Linsmore. Uh, we played here about five years ago, and uh, we're back now. Funnily enough, five years ago, um, and it was also in July. So so very kind of fitting. And uh, on the road, where where have you been? Um, we haven't been too far. We played a festival in Ottawa back in August. I think it was August. Uh, so we had a bunch of tributes. It was a big tribute festival. So we had uh, Maiden 06. There was uh, Motor Headache, a Motor Headache tribute also with uh, Roland. There was a Twisted Sister tribute that I unfortunately could not remember the name of. And there was a Metallica tribute called Mentalica, I believe, from Quebec. Uh, very good. Yeah, it was cool. Three day festival. Any funny stories from the road? There was a time where uh, I was playing spot one in Brampton with Madam. That show, I think we were with Rustic and. Uh, who else were we with? I forget. Oh, Twitch. Twitch, with, yes. Uh, with Rustic and Twitch, yeah. Yeah, Rustic and Twitch. Yeah. Steve so, McDonough. yeah, McDonough. So, we were there, and I like to go into the crowd when I play. So, I had this skull guitar, and I go out into the crowd, I'm playing. I get up on a chair, right? I play, I play this solo, nail it, and then I go to jump off the chair. And as I'm coming down, because it's kind of a V shape, right? 
it's very not, pointy. It's very pointy, and you kind of can't get a great gauge on where everything is. So I jump and I smacked the corner off of a table. Oh, took right a big oh. chunk off of it, <laughs> and uh, I just looked at him. I'm like, so I, I looked at. So, and now it's fixed, and it it's also fixed. has a crackle it's finish. Actually, it got a new, a new, fan, a new uh, crackle. It finish. also has a crackle finish. Oh, super so, glue. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's fixed, but it was uh, so a scary good. moment. So that wasn't a funny story. Oh, it was hilarious. It's, in hindsight, I think it's it was, hilarious. I think it was okay, I'm laughing he, now. He, Other favorite places to play? Um, so one of my favorites that I played. Um, originally, I really liked playing uh, the Biltmore with Helmet, oh, yeah. the Juice Priest Oshawa. tribute. Yeah, Oshawa. That was a very cool show. Um, the biggest venue I've played, all the lighting and stuff, and the sound, all of it was just such a cool kind of experience. So that one was cool. I also really enjoyed the... Uh, Rhythm and Bruce in Cambridge, which unfortunately closed. It was a very, it was a really fun venue, nice sized stage. The staff there were awesome. It was actually inside of a, a brewery, like it was split half and half. It was a brewery and a, like a, a music venue. And it was just a really cool vibe there. Everyone's always great. The, the crowds were always fantastic. They paid well. Great. So I definitely miss that venue. Um, those are definitely my two other favorites. Yeah. Oh, cool. Where's the scene going? Okay. Um, well, obviously, COVID made everything have like take a really big hit. Yeah. So for about, I want to say four-ish months, we weren't allowed to play at all right. um, because it was all at like such a high rate. So that shut it down completely for a while. Like a lot of places were really in trouble of even like staying open. Yeah. But during that time, we were able to play a few shows here and there, but we had a very small capacity as well. Like I want to say capacity was like a hundred people. Yeah. We had like so face it wasn't shields. As exciting and stuff. Yeah, but there was but like, now we're past it. We are past now. that now. I see it coming back. I, it's coming back slowly but surely. And and of course, there's a new generation of people who don't get exactly. into the old school exactly. music. Exactly. That's so the thing. So either the bands are catering to that. Is this where you're going? Like I'm um, kind of. Yeah, I think. I don't mean to lead your. No, your I answer. I do think you have that pretty much exactly right. Um, obviously, like the the classic bands, your Maidens, your Metallica, your Priest. It's all still very like relevant, but yes. if you look at, if you want to get younger generations in places and keep it really like vibrant and alive, uh, it's going to be bands that are you know doing this newer stuff you know your your metal course and your death course. And there are there are and there are a lot of bands. I've seen a few of them at, at the uh, size clubs and stuff. There were there were some cool bands playing at the uh, for anyone that knew uh, Walter. Yes. When when Madam played at Walter's show. We were an outlier. There was a lot of really cool, like, oh, very modern metal there. Awesome. We're, obviously, we're playing, like, you know, Metallic Iron Maiden. But, yeah, there was a lot of really cool stuff there that I think uh, those kind of bands could really bring the scene up a notch. That's cool. So, it is about original music, isn't it? Uh, to a degree. Yeah. I think original music is great for if you want to really go somewhere in the industry, but if you want to, like, play bars and stuff I think right. personally I would always say that in a bar I I think covers do better generally especially tribute bands because you get, you get people, the dedicated people yeah you get dedicated fans going like if you're say you start an original band you go book a show you're playing for a few people you might make a little bit but overall if you really want to draw at first I think a tribute band is uh, where the real draw is well, I think, you know, it's it's worth it to to keep it going. Oh, yeah, 100%. As long as you can keep something creative, you know, happening. Yeah. All right. Well, Sebastian Burnside, Made in 06 and others. And uh, we're going to see some Made in 06 tonight. Hopefully I get some more good videos like the Australian Wildfire tonight. Uh, that one's doing pretty good on, on YouTube. Oh, yeah? But there's, a, you know, Jake's are awesome now. Like, oh, I yeah. watch a lot of his videos. Oh, yeah, his are awesome. So, uh, so yeah, it's good that you know people like me inspired bars to get their own cameras. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, here he comes. So, musicians in bars getting beer. Sebastian Burnside, Made in 06. Thanks for being on the show. Of course.